It's 3 a.m. on the medical floor. You get a call. Mr. Miller, 68-year-old patient with heart failure has a blood pressure of 80 over 50. You think dehydration, maybe fluids will help. But at his bedside, you see him gasping for air, legs swollen, skin stretched, and hear crackles in his lungs. He's drowning in fluid, yet his blood pressure is dangerously low. This is the paradox. Wet but dry. Giving fluids could push him into respiratory failure. The key is understanding that his body isn't lacking water, it's just in the wrong place. Fluid has leaked from his blood vessels into his tissues and lungs. The problem isn't total volume, but distribution. Your assessment changes everything. You realize more fluids would be harmful. Instead you ask, why can't his body keep fluid in the vessels? The low blood pressure isn't from dehydration but from a lack of effective circulating volume. This distinction is life-saving. Great nursing means seeing beyond the monitor, connecting history, physical signs, and vitals. You're the frontline defense against a deadly mistake. Your judgment can save his life. Wet but dry means fluid is in the wrong place. The body has two main fluid compartments inside the blood vessels, intravascular, and outside in the tissues, extravascular. When the vessels are dry, blood pressure drops. But when the tissues are wet, you see swelling, crackles, and shortness of breath. The capillary walls are leaky, or the pressures that keep fluid inside have failed. Imagine a leaky irrigation system the ground is soaked, but the plants are wilting. Mr. Miller's total body water is high, but his effective circulating volume is low. Adding more fluid just worsens the overload. IV fluids will escape into tissues, worsening his breathing. The real fix isn't more water, it's stopping the leak. How does fluid escape? Heart failure and liver cirrhosis are the main culprits. Remember renin-angiotensin-aldosterone system. It is a compensatory mechanism that works against patients with heart failure and liver cirrhosis. In heart failure, the heart can't pump well so blood backs up, raising pressure and forcing fluid into tissues and lungs. The kidneys, sensing low blood flow, hold on to more salt and water, worsening the overload. In cirrhosis, a scarred liver, blood flow backs up in the portal system. GI tract arteries dilate due to high nitric oxide causing vasodilation and decreased blood pressure. High pressure in the portal circulation causes fluid to leak into the abdomen causing ascites. The liver also can't make enough albumin, a protein that keeps fluid in vessels. Without albumin, fluid leaks out even more easily. The kidneys again retain more fluid making swelling worse. The patient is soaked on the outside but their vessels are empty. As a nurse your assessment is crucial. Look for signs of poor perfusion, weak pulse, cool skin, delayed capillary refill, confusion. Labs help. High hematocrit means concentrated blood, high bun and creatinine with a ratio greater than 20 to 1 suggest kidneys aren't getting enough blood. Low albumin means fluid can't stay in vessels. In heart failure a high BNP confirms fluid overload. Combine your findings, massive edema and crackles, wet, low blood pressure and poor perfusion, dry. This is distributive shock fluid everywhere except where it's needed. Your job is to see both sides of the puzzle. Key dry signs, low BP, fast heart rate, cool skin, delayed refill, low urine, confusion, weak pulses. Key wet signs, edema, crackles, vascular congestion on chest x-ray, high BNP. Only by seeing both can you advocate for the right treatment. Now you act. Don't just report low blood pressure, explain the full picture, he's wet but dry. Swollen crackles, low urine, report net fluid balance, is it positive, fluids could harm him. Suggest alternatives. Should we start a vasopressor like norepinephrine? Vasopressors squeeze vessels raising pressure without adding fluid. This restores perfusion so you can remove excess fluid with diuretics. Monitor closely, if the patient is in respiratory distress. Arterial blood gas may be needed to support oxygenation to prevent the patient from crashing. Check manual pressures, skin, mental status, urine output, titrate medications as ordered, watching for response. You balance restoring pressure and removing fluid. Recognizing wet but dry is advanced nursing. Your eyes, hands, and voice are the most powerful tools in the room. Thank you for watching my video and for supporting my channel. If you want more learning, watch my other videos. Stay strong and proud. You belong to the most trustworthy profession in the world. Take care.